legal and regulatory definition uh, a pesticide is, any sort of substance that, uh, you know, repels or helps um, prevent damage to a, a plant or other. So herbicides, insecticides, fungicides, they all fall under that. And both independent research and uh, governmental research, um, academic as well, that shows that pesticides are tied to a range of health problems. Um, reproductive, neurodevelopmental harms, kidney liver disease, and cancers. This is an activist kind of craziness. This, these are documented, um, you know, real concerns. And it's one of the reasons why farmers who are exposed to pesticides so directly, um, you know, are supposed to have special training and more special protective equipment because we do know that pesticide exposure um, causes disease and, and illness. And a lot of the conversations seem to focus on glyphosate, Roundup, you know, I'm sure every one of you has heard about um, the litigation that's been ongoing, um, and everybody probably knows about Roundup, right? We use it on uh, lawns and gardens and golf courses and parks and playgrounds and spray when your children um, play uh, in their school districts. Um, and of course, farmers use it uh, to grow our food. It's ubiquitous in the environment. It's found not just in residues on our foods, um, but it's found in water, it's found in the soil, it's found in the air, it's even found in rainfall. The first trial, San Francisco, August 10th, jury verdict came back, said $289 million, 250 of that impunitive. Um, they found that Monsanto acted with malice um, and complete disregard for consumers and for health and welfare. And I was talking to one of the attorneys today and he told me something I didn't know. He said they had offered to settle that case uh, for six million dollars. Uh, <laughs> and Monsanto told him to go jump in the lake. They didn't, weren't interested in settling. This is um, Judge Carnell, uh, San Francisco uh, County Superior Court. This is what he said when he looked at all of this evidence and these documents. The internal correspondence could support a jury finding. This is well before the verdict. This is months and months ago. Um, aware of the risk. It could support a finding that Monsanto has long been aware of the risks, that its glyphosate-based herbicides are carcinogenic, but has continuously sought to influence the scientific literature to prevent its internal concerns from reaching the public sphere. This is damning. You know, in and of itself. This academics review, genetic literacy projects, sense about science, biofortified. Um, these are different groups that work to really confuse consumers. Um, and they put out a lot of information on social media channels and they write articles and blogs and they really work search engine optimization so that their information will come up higher on Google searches if you're trying to search for certain things. And then the American Council on Science and Health claims to be so independent, yet we have internal documents where they're, you know, reminding Monsanto that it's time to write the check. Um, and uh, they're working together to figure out how to, again, discredit IARC and promote the safety of glyphosate. Which is fine. I mean, again, if, you, if, you, if this is your position and you want to be um, supporting the chemical industry or product or anything, you know, it's fine, but be transparent and say, we're getting money from this organization or we're doing this. It's the lack of transparency and truthfulness that I think is the most outrageous. This is just another way of showing the dramatic rise in the increase of this chemical uh, in our lives. These are uh, part of a list of all of the different foods that glyphosate is used um, to produce. Watermelon, rice, peppers, pecans, almonds, onions. A lot of people think it's just corn and soybeans and uh, row crops, but it's not. It's a whole array of vegetables and fruits and, and things that you know, we consume, that our pets consume, that livestock consume. Uh, it's, again, it's uh, pesticide has become pervasive in our world. And this is why, again, we have glyphosate showing up in our food. We've overused it, we're using more and more and more of it. Uh, and it's showing up in our food. I'm sure you guys have heard about this in the news. This is an older one. There's been some newer information come out. Um, these are done by consumer groups, academic groups. Um, but the FDA has also started testing. And this is a story, um, I've been tracking the FDA uh, for years on this, and they, they sort of secretly, they didn't want to talk about it, they started testing in 2016. Um, because they hadn't been doing this. They hadn't been testing food for glyphosate residues. Then I wrote this story about uh, 
FDA finding it in oatmeal. They were pulling baby food oatmeal off the of store shelves and finding it in all of these oatmeal products. This was from a Freedom of Information. He says, I brought wheat cracker, granola, cornmeal. There's a fair amount in all of them. This is the only thing um, that he couldn't find. I guess you can't see this. The only thing he couldn't find glyphosate in was broccoli. This is information that the public should have. I'm going on a rant now, but I mean, these are public agencies. They work for us. This is food that we're consuming. Um, and this is information they don't want us to have. This is information that they're hiding from us. In these documents as well, it shows they found illegal levels in a corn sample. And they're talking about how the, the corn will not be considered an official sample, so it's not going to have to be reported to anybody. Again, chlorpyrifos, maybe you've heard about this. This is an insecticide marketed by Dow Chemical. It's been really controversial. It's also a really good example of this notion that our government tells us certain levels are safe. They've been telling us for years certain levels of chlorpyrifos are safe in our food. Until they decided it wasn't, which was a few years ago. And the research that came out is that it is so damaging to children's brains. Um, and it's, it's very clear, direct, and strong evidence that it does neurodevelopmental damage to our children and it can contribute to ADHD and attention deficit disorder and lower IQ points and all these sorts of things that we don't want. It's been banned from household use, but because of marketing and lobbying from the chemical industry, it's still used on our food. It was supposed to be banned. They finally decided they would ban it from agricultural use um, in 2017. And then Dow Chemical came in and met with the new administration and kicked in a million dollars for the inaugural fund and had a few meetings. And so the ban went away and it's still on the market. And there's a big fight going on over that. Pediatricians concerned about childhood pesticide exposures. And this isn't a secret. Again, this is doctors, healthcare professionals, researchers around the world. Our own government scientists, many of them are saying, we need to be worried about this. We need to take action. Epidemiology evidence demonstrates associations between early life exposure to pesticides and pediatric cancers to treat decreased cognitive function, behavioral problems. We are you know, poisoning our children. It's right to know a little teeny tiny um, nonprofit that, and all we do really is just do research and file freedom of information requests and sue.